Hi everybody, welcome to the homestead and Elk Sausage Central. Today we started to make our sausage. We're gonna do a breakfast sausage and an Italian sausage. Now elk is really, really lean. So if you look, we have the elk in here, but we also have pork in here. Might look a little weird. Uh, it's because we've actually already added the spices to it. So chunked everything up, added the spices, mixed it all around. And now it's going through our KitchenAid. Which we can finally use. Which we can mm -hmm. finally use. Um, now, because of our really, solar, we had a yeah, solar Yeah, yeah, we had the whole solar thing. Needed the firmware upgrade. Certain now we're upgrading. appliances weren't working, blah, blah, blah. Okay. okay. Um, we really should have a grinder um, to do as much meat as we do. But right now we're going with the KitchenAid. This KitchenAid attachment is actually the KitchenAid attachment from my childhood. Mm. I've been using this thing since I could reach the table. Um, we have the, the grinder here. There's also one that grinds up cheese. I remember doing like huge wheels of Locatelli cheese as a child and picking it out. So this is really cool that we're able to do this. And I think this is the KitchenAid uh, that mom got, mom got us. us. Yeah. Um, but we're grinding everything through. It's going through on a coarse wheel first. This whole thing will go through again on a fire wheel. And we're actually going to make patties. We're not real big casing people, so we're just going to make patties. It's how we like it. When we're done the breakfast sausage, it's about five, six pounds of breakfast sausage we'll have. We're also going to do the Italian sausage. It's probably 11 pounds or so of Italian sausage. This is just the elk. We're going to do this whole thing again with the venison. Yep. Um, but we're we're pretty excited and uh, we'll let you know how it turns out later. Right. And then look at the difference in these two bowls sizes. Step to your left, Katrina. Native baby bowl, which we thought was our biggest bowl. Yeah. But no, we have this mungo bowl. This, this is their applesauce bowl. This was actually from Betty Musselman. Betty Musselman passed this on to us. Uh, her giant bowl, her giant pot, and her old funnel it was a funnel grinder thing yeah, for yeah. applesauce. So this bowl, Food mill you can't bowl. tell. It's got to be 18, 20 inches across. It's got to be. It's huge. So anyway. I actually hope it's big enough to do the Italian sausage. It's, I know. It's going to be tight. So shout out to Betty Musselman's family. I know some of you might be watching and we appreciate it and we love you guys. So a bunch of family, family heirlooms here being used in the process for us. So this is take one. So this is elk. First elk breakfast, first grind. And then we're doing the elk Italian. And then we actually have to take a trip to town to buy more, more pork, pork unfortunately, because we never did get that pig this past fall. But at this point, I don't know that a quarter pig would have fit in the freezer I don't, I don't think with so. as much meat as we have. So, all right. So just want to share the process with you. All right. Cheers from the homestead. Have fun, Petrina. Oh, I will. Hey, everybody. Kim and Petrina back here on the homestead. So we got our elk breakfast links done. And we don't like the casings. We always cut them off. So we're like, why should we even do it? We're even going to do this with our uh, Italian sausage. So these are our breakfast links. And what we did was we made them. I just hand rolled them all similar size, as close as you, they could be. You called them torpedoes before torpedoes, I started little, the camera. Little torpedoes. Um, and what we did was we actually froze them yesterday. So they're frozen now. And now we're bagging them up. Um, I think we ended up with 88 total. And Petrina figured out that is... How much? So we usually each eat two sausages with breakfast. So that's um, 22 breakfasts. And that's just the elk. So my brain had to do math and said, 22 for breakfast. We're going to do the venison next. That's 22 venison. So 44 breakfasts. And we usually have sausage once a week. So that's 40. Sausage, scrambled eggs. Yep. So it's like that. 44 weeks of sausage out of 52. So it's like a year's worth of breakfast sausage for us. So just to zoom in over here real quick. So I've got three bags, 24 in each bag, because I yep. did them in groups of four, because that's what we eat. So we've got three full bags, a partial bag. Um, I kept four out for, for breakfast. breakfast tomorrow because we're so excited. We it's, can't wait to they're try They're actually it. frozen when I took it out of the freezer um, in the garage, it smelled so good with all the spices Birds that we put in it. Yeah. So, so that's what we ended up with elk. Now we are doing this with deer as well, correct? Right. So I said, so yeah. we got 88, so you need to get 88 venison ones done. Okay. Um, yeah, you've got, you've got jobs. All right. Um, and that, like I said, that'll get us 44 out of 52 weeks that we won't have to buy breakfast sausage. Right. So now let me get this out real quick. Cause this is what we're working on today in the... Mongo 
Betty Musselman bowl. What is this? Like 30 pounds? <laughs> so we it's, ground it up yesterday. It's like 18 pounds of sausage. Sorry about the noise. Um, ground it up yesterday. We got geez, too late in the day. This is that heavy duty stuff, not just regular oil. It's getting too late in the day for us to do this. So this is actually our Italian sausage. That Double ground. We're going to do now. And that will be in larger lengths, like when you buy, you know, Italian sausage. You know. No casing. Pot, whatever. No casing. We're just going to do it the same way. Make our torpedoes. Freeze them. Then we'll bag them up. and. So why did up. you freeze them before you bagged them? So it was easier. Like, so I could hand They're, they're solid now. All right, makes sense. I just, you know, people are going to wonder, like, oh, all right. why did she freeze them okay. the way she did? And I wish we had smell vision because the herbs coming off of this are phenomenal. And we, we um, do prefer, like, likes... a sweet Italian sausage, so yeah. there is there is some red pepper in there to give it a little zing, but not it's not, it's not hot. So Petrina mixed up all of the herbs for the Italian and all of the herbs for the breakfast stuff. And I'll do that again now so um, we can do the venison. Give me one sec to get over there. And so what she did was used our, oh, this weighs about 40 pounds too, our Lava Rock Mochaccetti. Um, and she ground up all our herbs in here. And you bought me that thing like 10 years ago and it kind of sat, but man. Yeah, now we're using it like crazy. I used to, and, I, so I, and I did our coriander that, seed in there. Mm -hmm. I did our black pepper in there. Fennel? Uh, no, the fennel actually stays whole. Okay. Um, right. But yeah, the coriander and the black pepper, I, I hand ground in there for, so, for both. Yeah, this is awesome. So that's what we got going on. So today, bagging this up, and then we can't start our deer or our uh, our venison sausage yet because we have to go to town. Yeah, I think um, I'm going to run out of fennel before I could do the venison. But Well, and are you adding pork to that as well? Oh, you're right. Yeah, I do have Everything to... is so lean. The venison's so lean. The elk is so lean. We actually have to add a little bit of fat to the sausage. Um, but our ground stuff, like for burgers and things like that, meatloafs, we don't know yet if we're going to add any fat to that. I know everything I read going. talked about adding either like bacon or pork fat, but I, we always buy when we buy beef, we buy ninety three seven. Our, so our bison when we used to buy bison didn't have any fat added to it, so we don't we don't like the fat in our. our and and we're also not meat. sure if we're going to do a coarse grind or a fine grind. So at some point, I am going to grind a coarse grind test it we'll test it and see what we think and then yeah. if we have to so this is fine grind you can see it ran through the um the processor twice off of the kitchen aid so it was real it was fat at first it was almost quarter inch and then you do it all again on a smaller die um, die and it cuts it smaller so that's what this is right here so we're gonna figure out if we want you know coarser cut ground stuff or whatever it doesn't matter to us so anyway that's what we got going on at the homestead. Fun times. All right. Cheers, everybody. Take care. Bye. Everybody, Kim and Petrina here on the homestead. So we're wrapping up our sausage process. And pinto bean. And pinto bean. We're wrapping up our sausage process for the elk at this point. So we had our breakfast sausage. Um, you saw we did that uh, episode. Not episode. Like, we did a little bit before. And we ended up with, like, 88 sausages or yep. something like that. Yep, because I figured that's 22 breakfasts for right. us. And so we did the math on that, and that came out to like $20, $27 worth of sausage, breakfast sausage or something like that. It was ridiculous. So what we did here is we actually made 36 elk sausage meatballs, you know, fun. And then we have um, a layer of 20 and a layer of 20, so 40 elk, links. elk sausage links. These are all Italian sausage. The other ones were breakfast sausage. So I don't know what the savings on this would be, but I know when you buy like a one, two, three, four, a five pack of the uh, name, name brand or even store brand or whatever, they range from five seventy nine to seven seventy nine for five of them. So we got forty of them. So we'll take an average median of six dollars, right? Yep. So six dollars times how many packages would that be? Forty of them. Five packages, five times That's eight. eight packages. Eight packages. Eight, six, seven, eight. Forty-eight dollars right there. Plus the balls. And then the balls, like, they're not sold. So probably, you know, close to a hundred bucks, I would say. Yeah. Um, In just sausage, breakfast sausage and Italian sausage and stuff like that. Now, we still have to do all our ground um, sausage for, like... Hamburger, hamburger meatloaf. And, yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, so we just, we're doing things in stages and getting it done, but... 
ended up with a lot a lot of meat i mean i can't even tell you how many countless pounds of steaks and roasts and tenderloins and, and loins and all kinds of stuff we have like just hundreds of dollars worth of stuff i'm gonna smoke some stuff we're gonna yeah, crop we have, pot it in a we couple have weeks the ribs we have stuff that we're gonna slice thin and we're probably gonna dry it for like jerky and stuff like that um our difficult thing was that we had to get all processed all at once um but so a lot of people take their stuff to a processor and i talked about this before like i had been hunting before but i never totally broke down an animal and did all this but you pay hundreds of dollars to do that so two things for us number one we didn't want to pay hundreds of dollars to do that number two we couldn't have gotten the thing out of here to get it to a processor to have it done. No, and it's such a pain in the butt for us to like get no. to town. So we would have had to do it twice. Right. And our thing, honestly, is that we're just trying to be self-sufficient, self-sustaining, and do our own thing. Um, like for, for example, tonight we're having a stir fry. And I actually have um, some Swiss chard that we picked at the end of the season. It was still good. I... I picked it all, and we froze it in packages like this. Um, I think there's still six in the freezer. I know we've already used one. And I'm going to put this in stir-fry tonight. So, you know, it looks a little wilty and stuff, but... But Swiss that's... chard gets wilty when you cook it. It's like spinach, yeah. kind of. But it'll keep all its beautiful colors, too. So, anyway, we're just trying to be totally self-sufficient and wrapping this up, and then... Well, we're wrapping it up, but I also want to kind of talk about real quick. The other day, we tried the breakfast sausage. Oh, yeah. The breakfast the sausage. Links, the little links. Were, yep. And the yeah. breakfast sausage was really, really good. And then this morning, we always do poached eggs because today's actually Thursday. I don't know when anybody watches this, but um, so Thursdays, we always do poached eggs and Italian sausage. So today was elk Italian sausage. Right. Um, and it did taste different, but I, I saw a lot of different recipes as far as because we mixed fat in, so we mixed pork in. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of different <clears throat> recipes as far as how much pork to add in. Right. Um, and ours didn't call for, the one I picked didn't call for a lot of pork. So I think right. the more pork we use, the more it would have tasted like we're used to pork sausage. Right. So for example, Petrina, we each have one link in the morning on, on Thursday, poached egg day. So I cut it in half and then actually smash it. Petrina used to go to a restaurant in Jersey with her dad uh, occasionally. And she always got smashed Italian sausage yep. and eggs. So it's kind of this little traditional thing that we're carrying on. And then, Patrina, I'm going to step behind you and pull out egg cobblers and show them. Yes. Um, because these were cobblers that Maureen... Yep, Maureen got, went to, used to go to England a lot when she was younger. And so she bought those for <laughs> mom. Um, and I, I remember them, I mean, a lot through my childhood. And at some point, mom handed them off to us. Yeah, and we every Thursday... Is so poached egg day. Maureen... Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And if you ever come to Montana, we'll make you poached eggs. Um, okay, so I guess that's about it. Kind of got a little off track, but it seems to happen with us. And yeah. We're our, vi our videos are a bit of a train wreck, but we're <clears> fine. They are. But we're happy. Um, we're healthy. And this is actually liver for pinto bean that's going to get cooked up later. Um, she's well aware that the oh she liver. knows it's here yeah she would eat it raw like this like a, a liver popsicle if she could so anyway all right we're gonna wrap it up take care everybody uh next adventure would be uh doing the ground meat and we'll see how many pounds of that we end up with all right take care cheers from the homestead